herself is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for being here and your testimony. General McKenzie, uh, before I go there, I was going to ask the, the question on the ROE because we've had several conversations and I was still unsure as to who had the ultimate authority. Thank you for that answer. One has to wonder though, if he had taken the shot, uh, an ROE, in my experience, my 25 years deployments on four continents is absolutely crucial. If he had taken the shot in today's military, one has to wonder what would have happened to our young sergeant. But General McKenzie, my question to you, um, on August the 26th at a press briefing, and I'm trying to sort through the dates here, exactly what your intent was, uh, you said that you had a common purpose with the Taliban in the evacuation. That was on the 26th. Now you've testified here today that you were also telling people that we had to get out by the 31st or we were gonna be fighting the Taliban. Can you just walk me through those five days later you thought we would be fighting the Taliban from a common purpose on the 26th to full-scale combat on the 31st. I'm trying to, what was your intent sure. between so, those five days? Uh, certainly. Let me just briefly talk to the ROE question for a moment. So between 16 and 26 August, three teams did take lethal shots okay. with this ROE, and nothing happened to the individuals that took the shot. So let's be very clear Thank when you. we talk about this. Okay. Uh, three people applied the ROE with success and with lethal effect. Okay. So. We had an agreement with the Taliban, we were gonna be gone by the 31st of August. Mm -hmm. That was, a, a, we negotiated that at a very high level, that was not a military decision, uh, but it was rather a policy decision by the president, we were gonna be out of Afghanistan. And it was clear, based not only by vo voluminous intelligence reports, that if we remained beyond the 31st, not only would we be fighting ISIS-K, but we'd be fighting the Taliban as well. That was, that was very clear in the intelligence reporting that we were seeing. So. When I talked to the Taliban in Doha and in the days afterwards, it was clear they wanted us to leave. We wanted to leave. Those were the orders we had was to get out. So we did have a common purpose, and that common purpose was leaving Afghanistan. The noncombatant evacuation, by definition, is an operation where you're leaving. So yes, we shared a common purpose. I don't trust the Taliban. I don't like the Taliban. It's a highly transactional agreement, but it was designed to let us get out. And I will tell you that we certainly did not outsource our security to the Taliban, but I am confident that we would have had more Abbey Gate attacks had we not negotiated these limited agreements with the Taliban for some of the external security that they provided. Yeah, I was going to ask the two of you your assessment of the Taliban because most people just refer to it as Doha, but I always want to bring to people's attention the formal name of what we refer to as Doha. The agreement for bringing peace to Afghanistan between the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, which is not recognized by the United States as a state and is known as the Taliban and the United States. That's the formal name of this agreement. Uh, I have a copy here and I've been following your testimony uh, uh, closely as you've done it. Uh, I use the, the, the term naive with the ambassador Khalilzad uh, when he testified before this committee uh, just several weeks ago. Uh, I think the entire agreement was, um, was naive. I think it was poorly negotiated, and I think the two of you, along with uh, General Miller and others, were put in a horrible position uh, by that agreement. Um, this, uh, I've heard the words here from the other side of the aisle, highly partisan hearing. Uh, I will tell you I agree with several of my uh, colleagues here that have said we are still paying the price uh, for that go to zero decision. We are still paying the price around the world. Putin started moving troops within two months. Uh, we now see the, uh, the Red Sea uh, in its uh, current condition, Gaza, uh, Hezbollah standing ready. Um, I will tell you, I, I think, and I'm gonna, uh, I, I think what we engaged in General uh, Milley was not so much defending our nation, because I believe the mission of the United States military is to go and break things when our national interest requires it. Uh, 20 years there, we should have said, uh, we're leaving, if you do it again, we'll come whomp you again, we'll break things in the interest of the United States again. 
And my last point is I'm glad that one of you mentioned uh, the sanctuary because that was our fatal mistake in Vietnam, uh, the sanctuary across the border in Laos and Cambodia, and it proved a fatal error in, in uh, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq as well. There was a, there was a sanctuary, a cross-border sanctuary. Uh, last question, real quickly. Uh, Qatar is now playing a part both in Afghanistan, getting our folks out of Afghanistan, and in Gaza. Was Qatar a part of any of your discussions before this? Was, did it play a part? It was principally where we went to negotiate with the Taliban. It's where they hosted them. Uh, they did not have a significant effect beyond that. I will say, as we left, uh -huh. they began to flow. Uh, they, they flew people back into Afghanistan. The Qatar does a number of things across the region, as you're aware. Right. They, walk a, they walk a very tight, uh, thinly defined line between a number of competing interests, and they were certainly active in that at the very end of the Afghan engagement. I don't think the line is as fine as you make it. I yield back. The gentleman's time's expired. Uh, Chair, recognize.